Hello everyone. So in today's video, what I'm going to do is take you along with me as I start my seed starting schedule for 2022. So one of my favorite things to do in January when it's absolutely freezing outside and there really isn't anything else garden related to do is sit down in front of the fireplace, get my laptop out, and start to get things organized for this year's garden. It really is something that still makes me feel connected to the garden even when it's below zero outside like it is today. Uh, if you have watched my previous video where I calculated the cost of my garden for 2021, you will know that I absolutely love Excel and so that is what I use in order to keep myself organized for seed starting for the year. And this is actually something that I am really good at creating and then continuing to use it as I start to get into the garden season. So my plan for this video is I will cut between myself and then screenshots of the doc that I'm working on so that you can kind of see what it looks like and how I use it. And then what I'm also gonna do is put a link down in the description below with a shared copy of it. Uh, when you click on that link, it'll be view only, which means you can look at it, but you can't do anything to it. So you will want to make a copy of the document that you click to if you wanna use it and save it and edit it so that you can schedule your own seed starts for 2022. So that is the plan for today. I'm not gonna schedule all of my seeds because I think that would be rather boring to just sit me watch me sit and type out a whole Excel spreadsheet, but I will go through kind of the process and then add a few in there with you. So in front of me, I have my laptop here. I have a ginger lemon tea and I have a box of some of my seeds. So these seeds are actually the flowers that I went over um, as far as what I'm planning to grow in my garden for this year. So I'll link that video down below too if you want any additional information on any of these flowers. But now let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the Excel spreadsheet or the Google Sheets spreadsheet that I use for my seed starts. So this is the spreadsheet here that I use. I just made this completely on my own. I used a version of it last year, but I have made some tweaks to it, kind of what worked last year, what I wish I could improve upon. And then I also just added in some color and a little picture of a flower here to make it pretty, because if it's going to be something that I'm using, might as well have some fun with it. So what I've done is I've put in one of the seed types already, so you can kind of see what exactly it is I'm doing and how the sheet works. Um, so starting here at the top in this green cell here, you'll want to put in your last frost date. So whatever that is going to be for you, for us in Chicago, it's supposed to be March 15th, or sorry, May 15th, but I swear it's always later in May, or if I put anything out there on May 15th, we have a late May cold snap. But since that's what's expected, that's what I'm gonna use in order to help determine when to start my seeds. And you wanna make sure you update this because this cell is part of the formula that's gonna calculate when to start your seeds. So for example, let's say that I change this to 5-30-22, which I'll do in a second. You'll notice that the seed start date here changes. So let's put in 530. And you can see that changed from the 17th of April to the 2nd of May. So if you are gonna use the spreadsheet, that's the first thing that you'll want to update. And then down here is where you'll enter in your seed information. So I have the first column here, which is just the plant name, so the variety that you're growing. I have a column here for type, and the reason I did this is that that way you can label if it's gonna be a flower, if it's gonna be a vegetable, an herb, or fruit, and you can use this column later if you wanna sort to get all of your flowers together or filter if you wanna see just your vegetables. So you can use this column if you want, but it's not necessary. I also like to put here the number of seeds that I have. That way, let's say that I'm going to um, start 20 of them. I can go ahead and subtract 20 from 50. I know that I have 30 left. So this I just like to use to keep track of how many seeds I have when I start, and then I can subtract from that if I'm planning to, again, start a certain number this year, I'll know how many I have going into next year. Then I have this column here called method, and I put in here recommended. Um, some seeds will say you can either transplant or direct sow. Some will recommend one versus the other. Some will say only do this. So for example, like sunflowers, you want to direct sow those seeds. Um, but one thing I do love about the Johnny Seed Packet is that 
It just has so much information on it that it'll give you a lot of detailed info for everything you need to know. So if Johnny Seed tells me to transplant, I'm gonna transplant. If they tell me to direct sow, I'm gonna direct sow. If they say both are feasible, then I typically will still start some inside just to get a head start on the growing season. Now here is where you'll want to put in the information as far as how long before the last frost are you supposed to start sowing your seeds indoors. This should be on the seed packet that it gives you. Again, this one, the Giant Dahlia Flowered Magazinia. Um, here in the back it says, sow into 72 cell flats four weeks before last frost. So I put four in here. There's actually a hidden cell here in column F for days before last frost, that's just taking the number of weeks times seven days in a week, and then that's what's used to calculate the seed starting date. So I've hidden that cell. You can use it if you would rather just see the days um, before the last frost instead of using week before last frost, but since the majority of the seed packets I come across all have the time before last frost in terms of weeks, that's why I decided to have both of those included in here. Um, if it's something where you're going to direct sow, let's say, and I just put like zero in there, um, then what you're going to see over here is that there's going to be zero days before last frost. And if I drag this down, that's going to say to start the seeds on May 15th. So anything that's going to be direct sowed, um, how this is going to work is it's going to calculate by just showing the actual last frost date for your area. And again, that's all gonna be dependent on what you put into here. So I'm going to rehide this column since we don't need it. And I'm going to delete that zero from there for now. But basically the seed start date just takes the last frost date minus the number of days before the last frost date. So that column F, just a simple formula of subtracting one from the other. It actually, it took me a while when I was using Excel to realize you could just subtract dates from each other or things from dates. And I feel like that was one of those things that was kind of mind blowing for me, but also maybe I'm weird about that. I don't know. <laughs> uh, next, I have a column for outside spacing. So a lot of the columns after the seed start date are just for me to help keep track of planning for when things are actually in the garden. So this outside spacing doesn't have anything to do with seed starting but it does have to do with the spacing of the flowers or the vegetables once you get them outside. So that way I don't have to look it up later for the seed packet. I just know that once I move these zinnias outside, they need to be anywhere between nine and 12 inches apart. Column I, I have days to maturity. Now this one is just uh, kind of a little bit ad hoc. So days to maturity, again, for flowers, it doesn't really matter as much for things like vegetables or fruits that you're actually going to harvest, um, although you are harvesting flowers if you cut them. But when you're looking at days to maturity, the way I'm using it, it's gonna be on the early side because I'm taking it and it's calculating from um, when I'm actually starting the seeds. So if I start these seeds for the zinnias on April 17th plus 75, then July 1st is when they would be mature. But when you're working with the days to maturity, that really is once they're actually in the ground outside. So I could take it from the actual last frost date, assuming I move them outside then, but I don't know if I actually will or not. So right now I'm just using it from the seed start date and it's just gonna be a very general guideline of when I can start checking my plants to see if they are in fact mature or ready to harvest. Now, this is something that is going to be particular to me, but if you want to change it from something that says container to like location in the garden, then you can use this column for yourself as well. But since I garden in containers, I like to have a column here that allows me to put in my ideas for which containers these seeds are going to be planted in once I've started them and they're ready to move outside. So for example, here with the zinnias, they get relatively tall, which we'll look at in the next one. So I probably wanna put them on something that's a bit lower to the ground so that they're not super high in the air. Again, wind is something I have to worry about on my rooftop deck. So for me, this is just a notation to say, maybe these will be good for grow bags or containers that are on the ground. Then I have their height, which for this variety of zinnias is 40 to 50 inches. 
although the ones I had last year were much taller than what it said the actual uh, final height would be. But this again is a general guideline to help me with placement of these in my garden. And then I just have any other general notes that I think are gonna be helpful when I'm ready to move them in the garden. So for here, the seed packet says, no support required. And if you want to encourage branching, you should go ahead and pinch the initial buds that form. So again, just things that from the seed packet I think are going to be really helpful uh, when it comes to planning for once they're outside in my garden. So that's a look at overall the columns that I have. When you click on the shared link, if you want to use this doc, I'll leave this first one in here as an example for you to look at. Uh, that way you can just have a reminder of kind of what information goes where. But now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add in another seed from my flower collection here. Uh, let's see, let's do something different than zinnias. Maybe I'll do the gumfrina since I know I have a lot of those and I'm assuming they will all probably be the same. So this one I'm gonna say is my QIS orange gumfrina. It's a flower, number of seeds. 50 and then let's look at the back here and see what it says so this one specifically says transplant and then in parentheses recommended so that is definitely what I'm going to do that's what I did last year and it did seem like these the gonfrina that I had last year which was a different color but same variety uh, definitely seemed like it took a bit longer to grow so I can only imagine if I had started it directly sown that it just would have taken even longer um, so this one says, so six to eight weeks before last frost. Now, one thing to note is that if you put in a range of weeks here, um, that's, <laughs> you can see here it actually says, I should start these seeds on April 18th. I guess that would probably be 1965 since we're subtracting. Um, so using a range in here isn't going to work as far as the seed start date calculation. So my plan for this is just to use the longer one. So if this says, so six to eight weeks before last frost, I'm gonna do eight. Um, again, just because I think May 15th is sometimes a little bit too early of an estimate of when I can move things outside. So I'd rather start them, or am I thinking of that backwards? Do I wanna start them six weeks? I think I just got myself confused. Yeah, I wanna start them six weeks. That way, if they're inside a little bit longer, that will be fine. So what I just said, the opposite of that. So I'm going to use six weeks so that way if I don't move them outside until the end of May, then that'll be a full kind of eight weeks of growth. So six here, that means I need to start the seeds indoors on April 3rd. So a couple weeks before the giant zinnias. Outdoor spacing, let's see what this says. Uh, transplant, no, direct seeding is not recommended for these at all. Six to eight inches apart. So a little bit closer than the zinnias. Days to maturity, 85 to 100. So yeah, they do take a little bit longer. So starting them inside, much better, uh, especially for our growing zone. Harvest, days to harvest or days to maturity here. Oh, did I make this? No, days to maturity is 85 to 100. I already did that. Uh, the harvest date then, let's drag this down. So this one is also not gonna work with a range. So what I'm gonna do here is, let's do the earlier one, just so again I can start checking a little bit sooner to see if they are mature or not. As far as the container, what I think I'm gonna do with my gonfrina, I think I really like them in the raised beds. So I'm gonna say raised beds and then even potentially the center bed. So the main one, kind of the centerpiece of my garden. Height on these is going to be 18 to 20 inches, which I'd say is about where they came in last year. And then for any additional notes, let's see here. Um, I don't think there's anything that's necessarily like super important. It does say no pinching or support. So I'll put that in here. No pinching or support necessary. So there we are now with our second one. 
the QIS orange gonfrema. Now, when I go through and do this whole list, I will definitely put all my gonfrema together. But of course, using a spreadsheet like this, I can always sort uh, and get these in different orders. So let's do, maybe we'll do a sunflower. Yeah, I'll do the sunflower next. So let's say, oh, which one do I want to do? Moulin Rouge. Let's do the Moulin Rouge Sunflower. And this one you want to direct seed. So it'll show you kind of a little bit differently how things are calculated when it's direct seeded in here. So Moulin Rouge Sunflower. It's a flower. <laughs> uh, minimum seeds in the packet, 50. This is direct. So since, again, we're not sowing these indoors, there is no like weeks before last frost. So I'm going to put zero. I know I just start the seeds after the last frost date. Outdoor spacing. So single stem varieties are four to six inches. These are branching. So branching stem varieties, 18 to 24. And in a container garden, when I know that something needs 18 to 24 inches of space between it and the next plant, that pretty much means it's probably going to be in its own uh, container or grow bag. Days to maturity, uh, 55 to 65. So again, I'll start with the smaller one, 55. Container, uh, I'll put say, alone in a grow bag. Or actually, for this one, I'm gonna say five gallon grow bag because that worked well for the sunflowers last year. Five gallon grow bag, height. 60 to 80 inches. And my plan with these is to keep them, I think probably in the same area um, along the wall where I had them last year because I think that looked really pretty with the dahlias over there. And that's the area that gets the most sun in my garden. And let's see if there are any special notes here. Uh, I don't see, again, anything. I'll say that Pinching is recommended. So yeah, it says pinching branching varieties is recommended to encourage branching in longer stems. Do not pinch single stem plants. So this one again, because it says specifically hybrid branching sunflower, um, I'll put in here that pinching is recommended. So there we go. That is my schedule in my Google Sheets for how I plan to start my seeds. And this is going to annoy me if it's not aligned like the rest of them. Um, so I'm going to go through here and just make sure all the formulas are copied down. That way, if I share it with you, uh, it's good to go. If you have a ton of seeds, you might need to scroll down and kind of drag anything with a formula down as far as you need it. But it should be pretty easy to work with. If you do want to use this and you have any questions, you can definitely let me know in the comments and I will be very happy to answer them. Uh, but I think that is everything for today's video. I'm just going to go through and continue adding the rest of the seeds in. Again, I think that would be kind of boring for you to just watch me do that. But I think it was good to kind of look at a few different types of seeds, getting them into this document. Oh, actually, before we go, there is one thing that I want to mention. Um, so coming back and looking at the spreadsheet, what I find to be the most helpful once I am 100% completely done with all of my seeds. Well, are we ever 100% because I will keep buying them. But once I think I have most of my seeds in here, I will come into column G and I will go ahead and sort A to Z. And what that is going to do is automatically list your seeds from the ones that need to be started first to the ones that need to be started last. And that way I can go ahead and make sure that I'm organized and what groups of seeds need to be started all together at the same time. Okay, so now I think that is officially everything that I have for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you found this helpful. If so, I can definitely share some of the other like spreadsheets that I use for garden organization um, if you would think that would be interesting. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.